Hey everyone, Dr. Barrett here with Hearing and Balance Doctors. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what oral rehabilitation is, what's involved with that, how us as audiologists provide that service to our patients. First we need to really talk about how hearing loss does impact quality of life. It tends to have a negative impact on quality of life in terms of social engagement and participation in activities. If, you, if you're not hearing your best, there are some things that you may not be able to be involved in as much as you would like. Our rehabilitation is really restoring the ability of one's ability to participate in certain activities and thereby just basically improving quality of life through what we can do with enhancing the hearing or optimize the hearing and its impact. So oral rehabilitation is not just about the patient. Oral rehabilitation can also be about the patient's spouse too, because you know there's an intimate relationship there. There's a significant amount of time that the patient spends with their spouse. As we know, communication is a two-way street, okay? If someone is not hearing their best, that's influencing communication on both ends of the spectrum there. There are many different components to oral rehabilitation. You know, first and foremost, there's diagnosis. If someone has a hearing impairment, there could be something wrong at any point in the auditory system. We know there's problems with wax buildup. That's usually best case scenario for a hearing loss. We remove the wax and then the hearing loss is improved. But then there's other things that could go wrong. You have fluid behind the eardrum. You can have um, problems with how the b three tiny bones in your middle ear are articulating with each other. There's a very common type of hearing loss called a sensory neural hearing loss, where those sensory cells, different components of the sensory cells in your inner ear or your cochlea are damaged or are no longer functioning well. There is um, even central hearing loss. So for example, say stroke. Stroke impacts the middle cerebral artery. It impacts your temporal area, posterior temporal area. That is impacting your ability to understand speech. Ever hear of Wernicke's aphasia? Um, well, that is secondary to a middle cerebral artery stroke. Diagnosis. Let's figure out where in the system the hearing loss is occurring. You know, another part of oral rehabilitation is once we diagnose the hearing issue, how are we going to address that with the appropriate devices? We know there's different styles of hearing devices. There's different power levels. There's different technology levels, even color preferences. Everyone has a certain preference for how they want to treat their hearing, but the audiologist will use their expertise and knowledge to give the appropriate recommendations in that regard. So another one is um, provision of the proper assistive listening devices or assistive listening technology. One really cool one that I use a lot is the remote microphone. This is so cool because we know if, if we just have hearing aids on our ears, yes, every sound that's incoming to our ears is going to be enhanced in a certain way, tuned for your hearing loss, assuming you have prescription devices. But you're limiting your benefit to one point in space, okay? If you're in a very noisy environment, there, there's so many sounds competing that that one point in space is going to offer limited benefit, no matter how good the hearing devices are. You can have like Lamborghini hearing aids and they're not, they're going to perform top notch, but the benefit that they give you in that complex environment is not going to be ideal. So in that regard, let's use a remote microphone. So we're going out to eat with someone. It's a really noisy environment. The restaurants design that on purpose sometimes to help give the perception of a very lively environment. You want to stay here and everyone loves to come to this environment because it's so loud. But anyway, you're trying to hear your partner at the restaurant. Too much noise, really hard to hear them. Just give them the remote microphone. They clip it right here on their shirt usually, or they wear a necklace, the microphone's right here. Their voice gets picked up by the microphone, gets sent directly into your ears. It's like they're whispering in your ears, okay? So that's the best fidelity of increasing the signal, the person you're trying to hear, in the presence of noise. Another thing that we do with oral rehabilitation is tinnitus management. I would say about 33% of the patients that I see that come in with a hearing loss do um, experience, to some extent, tinnitus. That's the ringing in your ears. Sometimes it's hissing, buzzing, humming, but most often it's that high-pitched ringing. 
It's usually secondary to um, hearing loss or noise exposure or even stress. But there's different ways to manage tinnitus. You know, the two main things that we talk about is mindfulness techniques, but also um, sound therapy techniques. So we really delve into that. We can have entire sessions with patients specifically focused on tinnitus management. The other thing is kind of tied with that a little bit is hearing protection. We know that noise induced damage to the auditory system can exacerbate your tinnitus. It can make your tinnitus worse. It can also make your hearing worse. The analogy I like to think of with noise exposure is staring directly at the sun without sunglasses. Who would do that? Nobody does that. Okay, so if you're in a really loud environment, please wear hearing protection. So you're protecting your sensory system from damage. So we talk about hearing protection. There are really cool devices that protect your hearing in active ways. We know if you just put earplugs in, that's passive attenuation or passive blocking of the loud sounds. But there's active attenuation. You have these plugs, you can have them custom fit if you want, but what they do is they apply phase cancellation to further suppress the ongoing noise in the environment. We have certain sounds which have, you know, wavelengths that come in at a certain frequency. The hearing protection devices are listening to those incoming sound waves and they emit an equal and opposite 180 degrees flipped waveform that phase cancellation occurs and it attenuates the hearing in an active way. So that's another great way to protect your hearing is through active attenuation. A lot of the times patients come in with their spouse or their partner and we really take time counseling the patient and their spouse about how to effectively communicate with one another. Oftentimes with sensory hearing loss, even though we can to large part correct the sensitivity issue, there still remains a certain amount of distortion because the sensory cells are broken. We're working with a broken system and we're trying to optimize that system as best we can. So audibility wise, yes, we can bring up that sensitivity, but clarity can still be an issue. And that way we need to focus on other things besides the technology. Communication strategies really help. Watching someone's face when they're talking. Don't let them walk away from you when they're talking. Trying to reduce all that background noise. Speaking a little bit more slowly. It's not necessarily talking more loudly. Slower is way better. And so along those lines, we have informational or educational counseling. Yes, communica communication strategies is one of those things. But another thing is informing the patient about the nature of their hearing loss, what they can expect is going to happen over time. You know, how are we gonna reassess the hearing? We like to reassess the hearing regularly to make to stay on top of things. If the hearing loss changes, we're gonna retune the devices for the current hearing loss to apply the most the best benefit we can. And then personal adjustment. We know oftentimes with sensory neural hearing loss, it is a gradual onset. It's insidious. It's the invisible disability. Um, over many years, you can have a gradual decrease in your hearing and you may not notice it, okay? So your brain has been kind of adjusting to that over time, but you're still being limited in your overall participation in activities in life. But once we address the hearing loss, now we're bringing your hearing all the way or close to where it should be. That's a huge change for your brain. It took your brain like 10 years to get used to that gradual change. You think your brain's gonna automatically adjust to uh, going back to a, a really good sensitivity level? No, it takes time. So as the audiologist, we really help the patients understand the process of getting used to hearing better because you know we need to give ourselves grace in that regard. And so we will give you all the information you need in that regard. I want to wrap this oral rehabilitation up with something that uh, we as audiologists spent a lot of time learning about in graduate school. It's something it called evidence-based practice. There's three components to evidence-based practice. You want to make sure you're giving all your patients this service. It's the highest level of service. So um, what we're doing is we're considering three things. The, the best practice that's available. So that's that's informed by research. 
We have PhDs in the field at every university doing a lot of research at cert with certain topics of, of hearing health care, oral rehabilitation, one of those things. We're going to use the current best practice to inform our decisions. We also have our clinical expertise. Over the years of working with patients, we, we kind of get a sense of what tends to work and what tends to doesn't work. So we're using that to influence our decisions as well. But lastly, we're really taking our patient values into consideration to give the, the trifecto to really support that evidence-based practice. The patient might prefer certain strategies or technology or service models compared to other patients. So we need to take that into account and it is individual care. Focusing on quality is really important. That wraps up oral rehabilitation. I know we talked about a lot of different things there. You can see there's a lot involved. Come visit us sometime if you're curious about your hearing. We will check it out and then go from there with all the information you need. All right, thanks.